Prelude. Lo, praise of the prowess of people kings, of spear-armed Danes in days long sped. We have heard and what honor the athelings won, oft shilled the shaving from squandered foes. From many a tribe the mead bench tore, awing the earls. Since erst he lay friendless and foundling, fate repaid him, for he waxed under welkin, and wealth he throve. Till before him the folk, both far and near, who housed by the whale-path heard his mandate, gave him gifts, a good king he. To him an heir was afterward born, a son in the halls whom heaven sent, to favor the folk, feeling their woe, that erst they had lacked an earl for leader so long a while. The Lord endowed him, the wielder of wonder, with worlds renowned. Famed was this Beowulf, far flew the boast of him, son of Schild in the Scandian lands. So becomes it a youth to quit him well with his father's friends by fee and gift, that to aid him, aged and after days, come warriors willing, should war draw nigh, liegemen loyal by lauded deeds, shall an earl have honor in every clan. Forth he fared at the fated moment, sturdy shield to the shelter of God. Then they bore him over to ocean's billow, loving clansmen, as late he charged them, while wielded words the winsome shield. The leader beloved who long had ruled, in the rockstead rocked a ring-dight vessel, ice-flecked, outbound, atheling's barge. There laid they down, their darling lord, on the breast of the boat, the breaker of rings, by the mast the mighty one. Many a treasure fetched from far was freighted with him. No ship have I known so nobly dight, with weapons of war and weeds of battle, with breastplate and blade, on his bosom lay a heaped hoard that hence should go far o'er the flood, with him floating away. No less these loaded the lordly gifts, thanes huge treasure, than those had done, who in former time forth had sent him, soul on the seas, a suckling child. High o'er his head they hoisted the standard, a gold-wove banner, let billows take him, gave him to ocean. Grave were their spirits, mournful their mood, no man is able to say in sooth, no son of the halls, no hero neath heaven, who harbored that freight. 1. Now Beowulf bode in the burge of the Shildings, leader beloved, and long he ruled in fame with all folk, since his father had gone away from the world till awoke an heir, haughty Halif Dana who held through life, sage and sturdy, the Shildings glad. Then one after one there woke to him the chieftain of clansmen, children four, Haragar, then Hrothgar, then Haga Brave, and I heard that Blank was Blank's queen. The Heatho Skilfing's helpmate dear, to Hrothgar was given such glory of war, such honor of combat, that all his kin obeyed him gladly, till great grew his band of youthful comrades. It came in his mind to bid his henchmen a hall uprear, a master mead house, mightier far than ever was seen by the sons of earth. And within it, then, too, old and young, he would all allot that the Lord had sent him, save only the land and the lives of his men. Wide, I heard, was the work commanded, for many a tribe this mid-earth round to fashion the folkstead. It fell as he ordered, in rapid achievement, that ready it stood there of halls the noblest. Hey, O oh, Rot, he named it, whose message had might in many a land, not reckless of promise, the rings he dealt treasure at banquet. There towered the hall, high, gabled wide, the hot surge waiting of furious flame. Not far was the day when father and son-in-law stood in feud for warfare and hatred that woke again. With envy and anger, an evil spirit endured the dull in his dark abode, that he heard each day the din of revel high in the hall. There harps rang out clear song of the singer. He sang who knew tales of the early time of man, how the Almighty made the earth, fairest fields enfolded by water, set, triumphant, sun and moon, for a light to lighten the land-dwellers, and braided bright the breast of earth 
with limbs and leaves, made life for all of mortal beings that breathe and move. So lived the clansmen in cheer and revel, a winsome life, till one began to fashion evils, that field of hell. Grendel, this monster grim was called, March raver mighty, in moorland living, in fen and fastness, fief of the giants, the hapless wit a while had kept since the creature his exile doomed. On kin of Cain was the killing avenged by sovereign God for slaughtered Abel. Ill fared his feud, and far was he driven, for the slaughter's sake, from sight of men. Of Cain awoke all that woeful breed, Ettons and elves and evil spirits, as well as the giants that warred with God weary while, but their wage was paid them. 2. Went he forth to find, at fall of night, that haughty house, and heed wherever. The ring Danes, out reveled, to rest had gone, found within it the atheling band, asleep after feasting and fearless of sorrow, of human hardship. Unhallowed wit, grim and greedy, he grasped betimes, wrathful, reckless, from resting places. Thirty of the thanes, and thence he rushed, fain of his fell spoil, faring homeward, laden with slaughter, his lair to seek. Then at the dawning as day was breaking, the might of Grendel to men was known. Then after was sail, was wail uplifted, loud moan in the morn. The mighty chief, atheling excellent, unblithe sat, labored in woe for the loss of his thanes. When once he had traced the trail of the fiend, spirit accursed, too cruel that sorrow, too long, too loathsome, not late the respite. With night returning, a new began ruthless murder. He wrecked no wit, firm in his guilt. Of the feud and crime, they were easy to find who elsewhere sought, in room remote, their rest at night. Bed in the bowers, when that bale was shown, was seen in sooth, with surest token, the hall thanes hate. Such held themselves far and fast, who the fiend outran. Thus ruled unrighteous, and raged his fill, one against all, until empty stood that lordly building, and long it bode so. Twelve years tied the trouble he bore, sovereign of shieldings, sorrows and plenty, boundless cares. There came unhidden tidings true to the tribes of men in sorrowful songs. How ceaselessly Grendel harassed Hrothgar, what hate he bore him, what murder and massacre many a year, feud unfading, Blank refused consent to deal with any of Daneland's earls, make pact of peace or compound of gold. Still less did the wise men ween to get great fee for the feud from his fiendish hands. But the evil one ambushed old and young, death shadow dark, and dogged them still, lured or lurked in the live-long night. Of misty moorlands men may say not where the haunts of these hell runes be. Such heaping of horrors the hater of men, lonely roamer, wrought unceasing, harassings heavy, or hay o wrought he lorded, gold, bright hall, and gloomy nights, and ne'er could the prince approach his throne, t'was judgment of God, or have joy in his hall. Sore was the sorrow to Shilding's friend, heart-rending misery. Many nobles sat assembled and searched out counsel, how it were best for bold-hearted men against harassing terror to try their hand. Whiles they vowed in their heathen fanes altar offerings, ask with words that the slayer of souls would secure give them for the pain of their people. There practiced this, their heathen hope. T'was hell they thought of in mood of their mind. Almighty they knew not, doomsmen of deeds and dreadful lord, nor heaven's helmet heeded they ever, wielder of wonder. Woe for that man who in harm and hatred hails his soul to fiery embraces, nor favor nor change awaits he ever, but well for him that after death day may draw to his lord and friendship find in the fire.